Hey YouTube, my name is Alan Sanford. I go by Crash RC in the FPV community, and today we're going to build this quad on a budget. Today we're going to be continuing on our build, getting these ESCs put on our quad. <laughs> we're going to do an old school build, the ESCs on the arms. We're not going to do a 4-on-1 ESC, but these are the Anniversary Special Edition 4-Piece Racer Star 35 amp. Now they have a, uh, a burst uh, rating of 40 amps, but they're 35 cons constant amps. So this should be plenty enough for our build uh, and the motors that we've chose. Uh, but you're going to see me do a lot of fiddling and fidgeting in this video. Uh, I'm even, I'm even going to do some things kind of not so well. Not not so well, but just kind of, I should have done them differently. Uh, I'm going to tape these ESCs down to the arm without putting any kind of pad or tape under them. And I go back later and I, I lift them up and I put some double-sided tape on there so they don't move around. But just be aware that in this video I'm going to put them down without double-sided tape under them. And I wish I'd have put it down on there to begin with, but... You know, it is what it is. Um, but you're going to see me doing a lot of fidgeting. Lots of fidgeting in this video. And this whole video is dedicated to the ESCs on top of that. Uh, the next video, we're going to get uh, four things put on the quad. But in this one, it's just the ESCs. And when you do an old school build like this where you put the ESCs on the arm, uh, one thing you're going to notice is that it takes a lot more time up initially but if you burn an ESC out you only have to replace one ESC it does up the weight of the quad just a little bit but I'm okay with that uh, a little bit heavier quad maybe but it's not that big a deal it's still plenty of quad for for me and for any kind of beginner or anything uh, and it is what it is uh, probably not gonna do a dialogue this whole video I'll probably let you just watch some of it I, I got a little bit of background music that um, it's going to kind of play real soft in the background, but it is what it is. Uh, so, <laughs> right here, I should have noticed that you know that ESC is moving around. I, sh I should just. I should have put some double-sided tape down, but I just, I keep going. And I'm saying right here, I'm telling you, I'm going to put another piece of tape right here and hold it down. It's not going to work. So through the power of magic video editing, we've got all four ESCs taped on the arm. And again, I still don't have any tape under there, but we'll get that double-sided tape. I don't do it on video, but I, I do get it under there. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these motor wires and i, I want to make sure i've got a little bit of slack i, I don't want them being like taut you know just completely straight i want them to have a little bit of slack that way um when i solder them on there they're not just at their max and so what i'm doing right here is i'm i'm, I'm not really pushing down on the wires i'm just trying to hold all three wires against the arm so i'm not pushing real hard i'm just pushing hard enough to hold the wires and um my little blade doesn't want to hold all three of them but i'm trying to make it like lay down against the arm and then come up because there's little notches on the escs and I, I want the wires to kind of stick up uh, a little bit so you're going to see me fidget with uh trimming these here and uh, once i get these trimmed up then we're going to solder them on By the way, these wires are really soft, and the wires inside of them are really, really soft. They're not really twisted together, but they're they're not like braided wire, and so the wire is a little bit more difficult to cut. You really have to like get your side cutters on there just right and, and cut it. Uh, you know, I, I probably should use some wire strippers, but I'm just gonna use these side cutters right here. And I'm gonna strip these wires. I've been doing it for a long time. Even before I started building quads, I was doing it with all kinds of different projects that I worked on, so that's just how I do it. Um, I'm 
trying to trim back a little bit of the sheathing that didn't trim, but I, I, I get it off. Now, initially I'm gonna solder this first one on with the wires kind of sticking out the side of the arm and I realize that that's bad, but I'm gonna tin these um, pads up here real quick. And uh, my, my iron needs cleaning. And I stop in the middle of the video and clean it and I also clean it in the next video. I even reshaped the tip. I think I think it's in the next video without I reshaped the tip, but I even reshape, even stop and reshape the tip. And I did that, I, I really did that because on the next video I get down to doing some fine soldering on the flight controller and I'm using a thicker uh, solder right here for these big uh, ESC pads but in the next video I'm going to use a finer wire and so I, I really shape up my tip and clean it up and just so you're wondering why I keep saying next video next video is because I, I I built this quad all at one time and like I recorded the whole thing and I went back and broke it apart into different videos and I've pretty much already sorted out all the videos into their different parts and so I kind of know what's coming already um, but that's why I keep talking about it. I, like I know what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> so I've already got uh, got got this one tinned up. So I'm going to go ahead and put the wires on. Uh, and you'll notice that I went ahead and tinned up the other ESCs. Uh, but through the power of video editing again here in just a minute, I'm, we're going to we'll show you this one. And then I'm just going to like, ta-da, here's all four. Uh, but I don't hate the video would be just absolutely way too long if you watched me do each and every single ESC on each and every arm Each and every motor wire. So I, I, I just did one and said, well, this is how I did the others and then just cut the others out I always use tweezers to hold my wires so I don't burn my fingers. Those wires really do get hot. I mean, you don't leave the iron on there very long, but you want it to pull up, so you want it to get hot. So there's some heat there, and those well, those wires they are gonna get hot, especially um, bigger wires because you have to hold the you have to hold the heat there a little bit longer. That, that big red wire that's sticking up right there, man, and the big black black, black wires that's delivering power of those ESCs. We're gonna have to put some heat in there. I'm gonna have to hold it there for a minute so that it floods and and puddles up and, and does right because you last thing you want is a cold solder joint and luckily i didn't i ain't the best solder in the world but luckily i didn't wind up with any cold solder joints on this build so uh, the first test flight when i went out everything worked seamlessly and i do have a little noise in my video and you'll and you'll see it at the end of this but it's a low power problem what happens is uh, when i turn my quad on it starts out in the lowest power mode possible it actually starts out in pit mode and then I've got as I go to pre-arm I have a pre-arm switch and an arm switch then it turns the uh, video power up to uh, full so I got all four so now we got all four so now we're gonna start working on the PDB right here uh, but you're gonna see me fidgeting with that PD but anyway so it turns the power up and then that little uh, feed in the video feed kind of goes away but uh, I've got to figure out and make sure that that's what it is, but I think it's a low power, like when it's in low power because the run cam hybrid is powered off the VTX and when the VTX is in low power mode, I'm not so sure that it's delivering enough power to the video. Um, but anyways, at, at, when I turn it up to like uh, one milliwatt or I turn it up to 200 milliwatts or oh, let's say one minutes, one one watt if i turn it up to one watt or 200 milliwatts or something like that then there's not a problem at all like the the video the lines in the video go away it's really clean fpv video there's nothing in the hd video um, but that's what it's about it's a low power i did some research it's definitely a low plat low power issue So here again, you see me using the uh, side cutters to strip the wires and you, I'm going to get this one ESC situated to the PDB right here. And then uh, through the magic of video editing, we'll have all four of them done real quick. And then uh, we'll jump on to the flight footage after that.
And you'll notice right here when I'm soldering this wire, for those of you that are not good at soldering or you just haven't done a lot of it, I've got the iron on one side and I've got that solder on the other side of that wire. I'm not putting the solder to the iron, I'm putting the solder to the wire. Heat the wire up and then the solder will flood into the wire. That's how it's done. And um, then you take this wire and you go to the PDB after, after you put some solder down on the PDB and you put it down. So I took a break. I don't know if somebody come in and disturb me or something. But anyway, so I'm using a little flux here to help the heat because these are big old pads on this PDB. But I'm using the flux to help. And so I'm, I'm soldering my tip off screen. But uh, I'm going to heat these big pads up and I'm going to touch this solder to the pad kind of near where the iron is. Like I don't want to do it way out to the end. And then I'll just kind of fill it up and puddle it up and just get a big glob of solder on that. And that's what it looks like. And now we'll solder it down. Whoops, <laughs> I let go of the wire before it solidified again. And sometimes that'll happen. Just reheat it up and put it back down and then hold it until it solidifies and then let go. And I, I fix, I have to fix this issue. That wire's just sticking out there kind of weird. I even wind up having to cut it off right here because the wire's too long. So I'll have to cut it off. And then I do something stupid. Instead of retinning the wire and then putting it down, I try to just mash the wire down into the solder puddle. And that doesn't work out too well. And so then I wind up sort of uh, tinning the end of the wire in place uh, and then fixing it. But I, I get it fixed on there right. I don't leave any scragglers. But I should have I should have took my time and retinned this wire right here. But I just wanted to leave the mistakes in there. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes sometimes, but I do my best to fix them. But uh, I didn't want to take that out and edit it out either. I just wanted to see, you know, everybody makes mistakes. So don't feel bad if you make one. Just use a smoke stopper. Check all your solders. You know, take your time. And I always double check your solder joints. I like to grab mine with the tweezers, just give them a jiggle. And sometimes you'll, you'll discover, hey, I didn't get enough heat. I didn't get it down or, or whatever. You'll you, Sometimes you'll solve a problem right there instead of having a problem later on. But I'm using flux and you'll notice I'm, I'm putting this flux on these big pads. It helps the flux is the key, in my opinion, to a really good solder joint. You don't use the flux, the heat doesn't flow well and you wind up with these ugly looking i don't know they don't it, it just doesn't the, the solder just doesn't liquefy like it gets malleable kind of like lead but it doesn't really turn into a liquid and what you want is to turn into a liquid so that flux helps that heat dissipate into everything and helps that solder liquefy so that when it puts it down it gets real liquidy spreads out and makes a nice little puddle gets real shiny and uh, you don't wind up with a cold solder joint. So now I'm working on this um, this ground lead, trimming it down, uh, stripping it down, and then we're going to solder it down in place. And uh, after that, we'll have the power of video editing, and we'll have the other three done. And uh, that should be it for this video.
it's worth noting that I, I dip my the tip of my solder pad into the flux sometimes, and that will actually help clean that solder tip off. Uh, now, I know some people will tell you that's a bad thing to do. You should have a little steel wool, and I got some steel wool off the side over there. And I also got a little tap table where I tap the tip and um, and different things. But, hey, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I do things kind of differently. So sometimes I do them in ways that I shouldn't do them. But, you know, some of us just have odd ways of doing things. And I'm, I'm just like everybody else. Sometimes I do things an odd way. But uh, make sure you do it right. Take your time and make sure that you get your solder joints good heat flowing. You know, solidify that solder and hold them in place until they're until they solidify it again. When you take the heat away, and then let go of the tweezers. <clears throat> it's worth noting that this is the last one, and I decided to show you how I put the last one on there. Uh, and you can kind of see how it went from a liquid state to a solid state. And there you go. I got all four ESCs. And this is going to be a good place to stop today. In the next video, we're going to get the flight controller. We're going to get the uh, VTX. We're going to get the receiver. And we're going to get the buzzer put on there. And that'll pretty much be it for this build. That'll leave the camera uh, and then some cleanup. And... Um, I'll probably do, do another video after the camera video showing you what the final build looks like where I got the true RC antenna. Doing a little clean up here before I show the flight footage, but uh, we'll probably do one more video that shows all the different um, changes that I made off video to get this thing flying just right. And one of those includes changing how I mounted the uh, camera, but we'll cover that in the video where we do the camera. But here, just uh, enjoy this little flight footage on the way out and uh, this is before I fixed the camera mount by the way so uh, I still have a little bit of jello but I I wind up fixing how I mounted that camera to get rid of that jello but you'll see that low power problem there at the beginning you'll see some black lines white lines black lines but then as the, you look up there at the top left you'll see that tank change to one watt and all that goes away and cleans up and it's just fine <laughs>